My promise to every person watching this video. I promise that if you take the time to understand all I present here, then you will understand that HHO, or hydrogen on demand, cannot increase miles per gallon. I present the truth about HHO, and the numbers I provide prove that it cannot be any other way. Modern Day Snake Oil Salesman Unlike HHO snake oil salesmen, I will not make any money by sharing my HHO knowledge. You should always question their profit motives as they share their HHO knowledge, or more precisely, their lack of HHO knowledge. My discovery of HHO. When I first heard of HHO, I was very excited about it because some people were claiming it could increase miles per gallon by 20 to 100 percent. Some people even claim 200 percent. My research revealed the truth, and now I can share it with you. Using electrolysis of water to produce HHO, also known as oxyhydrogen, will always require more energy from the automobile engine than the HHO gives back to the engine. Therefore, it is impossible for oxyhydrogen to increase miles per gallon, and I will prove it. After you understand the proof, two things will happen. First, if you are considering buying an HHO device, no snake oil salesman will ever be able to mislead you into believing that HHO increases miles per gallon. Secondly, if you are an HHO experimenter, then you will understand that you are wasting your time and money on chasing the impossible. Then you can free up your time and money for other purposes. First, we need to examine a unit of measurement called the mole. One mole of any pure element has a mass that is exactly equal to that element's atomic mass in grams. For example, One mole of H atoms equals 1.00794 grams. One mole of H2 molecules equals 2.01588 grams. One mole of O atoms equals 15.9994 grams. And one mole of O2 molecules equals 31.988 grams. Next, we need to examine water. One mole of water equals 18.01528 grams and consists of two moles of H atoms at 1.00794 grams per mole and one mole of O atoms at 15.9994 grams per mole. When electrolysis separates the H atoms from the O atoms, the H atoms pair up to become H2 molecules and the O atoms pair up to become O2 molecules. This is because hydrogen and oxygen are diatomic. So, oxyhydrogen is H2 and O2 in a 2 to 1 molar ratio, the same molar ratio as water. Electrolysis of one mole of water, which weighs 18.01528 grams, produces one mole of H2 and one half mole of O2 gas, having a total weight of 18.01528 grams. Now, one liter of water weighs 1,000 grams, and because one mole of water weighs 18.01528 grams, one liter of water equals 55.508435 moles of water. When we use electrolysis on water, we get 55.508435 moles of H2 and 27.754217 moles of O2. The total is 83.262652 moles of H2 and O2 gas. 55.508435 moles of H2 times 2.01588 grams per mole is 111.898343947 grams of H2. 27.754217 moles of O2 times 31.988 grams per mole is 887.801893396 grams of O2. The ideal gas law. The ideal gas law states that at standard temperature and pressure, defined as 32 degrees Fahrenheit at one atmospheric pressure, which is at sea level, one mole of any gas occupies 22.412 liters. 83.262652 moles of oxyhydrogen times 22.412 liters per mole becomes 1,866 liters. At the typical HHO cell temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit, how much does the oxyhydrogen gas expand? 
using an ideal gas law calculator set at 120 degrees Fahrenheit and a fairly typical 200 feet above sea level shows that the oxyhydrogen expands to occupy 2,215 liters. Therefore, one liter of water becomes 2,215 liters of oxyhydrogen gas. How much energy does each liter of oxyhydrogen contain, and how does it compare to gasoline? From one liter of water, we get 111.898-3441 grams of hydrogen. 1,000 grams of hydrogen has 143 megajoules of energy, or 0.143 megajoules per gram. Therefore, 111.898-3441 grams has 16.00146 megajoules of energy. Divide by 2,215 liters and it equals 0.007-224-135-44 megajoules of energy per liter. By comparison, gasoline has 34.2 megajoules of energy per liter. Therefore, one liter of gasoline has 4,734 times more energy than one liter of oxyhydrogen gas at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Electrolysis turns one liter of water into 16.00146 megajoules of energy. But how much energy is used to free that energy? Using a fairly efficient HHO device, producing 6.1 milliliters per minute per watt, we feed it 500 watts, or 13.89 volts times 36 amps, from the alternator. In one hour, it will produce 6.1 times 500 times 60, which equals 183,000 milliliters, or 183 liters, times 0.007-224-135-44 megajoules per liter, which equals 1.322 megajoules of energy. However, 500 watts for one hour is a half a kilowatt hour. A kilowatt hour equals 3.6 megajoules of energy. So we used 1.8 megajoules of energy to create 1.322 megajoules worth of HHO. Where is the break-even point? If an HHO device could produce 8.31 milliliters per minute per watt, we could break even, because 8.31 times 500 times 60 equals 249,300 milliliters or 249.3 liters times 0.007-224-135-44 megajoules per liter which equals 1.8 megajoules of energy. However, in 1834 Michael Faraday proved that 100% efficient electrolysis produces 1 liter per hour with 2.36 watts of input. In 175 years, no scientist has ever proven him wrong. 1,000 milliliters per hour divided by 2.36 watts equals 423.7288 milliliters per hour per watt. Divide by 60 minutes, and it equals 7.0621 milliliters per minute per watt. Therefore, even if you could achieve 100% electrolysis efficiency, you still cannot break even. That means that HHO can never provide more energy than the energy used to produce the HHO. Taking a look at a real-world example, United States government statistics say the average vehicle gets 24.1 miles per gallon. At 60 miles per hour for one hour, this vehicle will use 2.49 gallons of gasoline. At 129.46 megajoules per gallon, that is 322.36 megajoules of energy per hour. From the example above, 500 watts of input produces 183 liters of HHO per hour, or 3.05 liters per minute, and produces 1.322 megajoules of energy per hour. 1.322 megajoules per hour is only 4.1 tenth of 1% of the vehicle's energy requirement of 322.36 megajoules per hour, and the HHO device robs more energy from the engine than it returns back to the engine. Now you can understand why HHO is, and always will be, a complete fraud, and why those people who sell these devices should be imprisoned for fraud. In conclusion, if someone tells you their HHO device increases miles per gallon, they are either doing very unscientific measurements of their miles per gallon, or they are just plain lying to you because they want to sell you their HHO device. 
Now, I just did HHO experimenters a huge favor, because now you can throw away all your HHO devices in the trash bin of history and stop wasting your time and money on chasing the impossible.